And today, in this country at least, we have come to take it for granted that if we want water, we can just turn on a tap and clean, safe drinking water will flow out. But it was very definitely not always that way. And not that long ago, most people had to get their water by drawing it up from a well, either by lowering a bucket down into their well and then winding it back up again, or by using a pump. And once the water had been pulled or pumped up, then as is still done in many parts of the world today, it had to be carried back to the house. To get the safe and accessible water supply into individual houses and businesses we enjoy today, in the 19th and early 20th centuries, the Victorians and Edwardians undertook huge engineering and construction efforts to build the water infrastructure across Britain. That laid the solid foundations for a system that still serves us today. There aren't many locations with their original engines and boilers still in place and able to work, but another of those few remaining places is at the Water Extraction and Treatment Works at Twyford, just outside of Winchester, which was originally constructed in 1898. The present owners of the site, Southern Water Services, still abstracts 5 million gallons, that's 25 megalitres, from its boreholes each day. The main buildings, which are now a scheduled ancient monument, present a coherent set of high-quality public works buildings, reflecting a time when authorities had a pride in their public facade. Like almost all of these facilities, the Twyford Works relied upon steam power to first lift the water and then once treated to propel it out into the supply system. And like a handful of other locations, here the coal-fired boilers could still operate to create the steam needed to power its big steam engine, which used to provide the pumping power here, and that engine can still run as it did when operating commercially. But unlike any other preserved water pumping station, Twyford still provides an example of what was the complete process for extracting and preparing water to be delivered into the homes of the local population. It was passed through a treatment process here to soften and filter it before being pumped into the water supply. And all of that remains here, as well as the bottled lime kilns to make the lime and the on-site quarry behind the main buildings that provided the chalk for that process. The engine providing the pumping power at Twyford is a big triple action engine used to first lift the water from the ground and then once treated to propel that water up to a holding reservoir above the works. It did that from 1914 when it was installed through to 1969 when it was decided that the electric pumps installed in the 1950s were so reliable that they no longer needed steam power as a backup. And that would probably have been that for steam at Twyford. The next step would probably have been dismantling of everything and selling it off for scrap. Had it not been for a group of enthusiasts who then stepped in and managed to stop that happening. Generally, where important parts of our working and engineering heritage have been saved rather than dismantled and sold for scrap, that has been due to the efforts and commitment of volunteer organisations, so really just private individuals. And that is very true of Twyford, where the volunteers form themselves into the Twyford Waterworks Trust. They wanted to at least be able to steam the boilers and operate the engine to demonstrate how all of this used to work. And that is, in fact, what they achieved. And so, from 1997 onwards, steam was generated and the engine run on regular steaming days at Twyford. My name is Graham Feldwick. I've been chairman of the Trust during the period when we returned to steam and I'm also the project director of the Return to Steam project. The, the actual trust, the Twyford Waterworks Trust, was actually set up in 1992. It was formed with some aims, and the main aim was to return to steam. The volunteers of the time got together 
and worked on the, uh, the boiler, what we call boiler number three, which is now sectioned for display, and actually got that working again in 1996. And from 1996 to 2003, Twyford was in steam. So returning to steam, it is very much returning to steam actually for the third time, not just returning from commercial days. But by 2003, the boilers not only needed attention to keep running, another major problem needed to be dealt with, asbestos. This material had been seen as a marvellous fireproof protective covering for pipes and boilers, and so was used extensively in factories and other places. We now know how dangerous asbestos is, and so repair or refurbishment of the boilers would also have to deal with that as well. Martin Gregory was one of the early volunteers and is still a member of the Trust. I'm Martin Gregory. I first came to Twyford uh, in uh, the 1960s, just after the steam plant had gone out of use. I've been a volunteer ever since. Uh, I was a trustee for many years. Uh, I'm now back to being a humble volunteer. The volunteers worked on returning it to steam and in fact we came back into steam with the Haythorn Davy engine that you will see uh, and this boiler, boiler number three, the 1916 boiler, in 1997. Uh, in the 1850s Two Americans, uh, Babcock and Wilcox, uh, patented uh, a water tube boiler where the water is in the tubes and the fires around the outside. This turned out to be a very um, more, much more efficient boiler and Babcock and Wilcox became the preeminent boiler makers of the 20th century. The boiler is essentially very simple. Along the top, is a steam drum. Suspended from the steam drum is a nest of tubes containing water. Uh, the tubes are inclined so that the fire, which is at that end, heats the tubes, boils the water, and the water circulation is down the tubes at the back, up along this nest of tubes where it boils, and then the steam collects in the drum at the top. Uh, in our boilers there is also a collection of small tubes uh, in between the steam drum and the main tubes. They're the superheater. They heat the steam further after it's been produced in the steam drum at the top. This boiler is, if you like, naked because the fire should be enclosed within a fire brick box, which we've stopped at this level. So when you see the real boilers, you won't be able to see any of the tubes. You'll see the end of the steam drum at the top, uh, and the rest is brickwork. Haythorn Davy, as a company, um, manufactured these engines, triple expansion engines, from uh, before 1900 uh, to the 19, 1920s. Um, they went bankrupt in 1933 or 4 uh, and are now part of Salzer Pumps. Uh, so the name still exists in that sense, um, but not making this sort of thing. They were, they were a very popular engine manufacturer uh, all over the world. Uh, you come across Haythorn Davy um, engines. The Imperial Steelworks in Japan had Haythorn Davy pumping engines and Babcock boilers. Um, <coughs> here, the largest Haythorn Davy was at Walton on Thames for the Metropolitan Water Board. Yeah. The engine drives two sets of pumps. Uh, there is a set of pumps below the engine, below us, 
here uh, and that pumps water up to the reservoir for the public supply. The well which the engine pump is the other side of that wall uh, and the crank that you can see going round here uh, was connected to the pumps in the well. So it did two jobs. Without the boilers to provide steam, the engine could not be run. And so, from then until 2010, the Trust set about raising money, and in particular put together a submission to the Heritage Lottery Fund to gain a grant to undertake the extensive works required, which would cost almost a million pounds. In 2012, that request met with approval, and work then began. The project was called Twyford Waterworks, a return to steam. But as we have heard, perhaps that should have been a return to steam again. <laughs>